you think you live in a free country when statistically this is the most violent country on earth. More violent than the two other countries that come close, Scotland and Australia. And it's more than twice more violent than either one of those countries. That is a statistical fact. So I don't go for the facades, man. I don't go for the Orwellian reality. I have only two concerns in my life, racism and freedom. I want to see freedom for my people in my lifetime somewhere in the Western Hemisphere, whether it's in the Northwest Territories of Canada or somewhere high in the Andes, my people are going to be free. And we're going to stop Denver from celebrating Columbus. And we're going to stop Denver from celebrating Indian killers. You know? We're going to stop the United States of America from naming, dehumanizing names, and employing and paying caricatures. Columbus has to die. After 500 years, kill him! Kill Columbus! His legacy still lives. Columbus has to die. You know, it's because of Columbus that we are primitives. Well, let me tell you, I am a born-again primitive, and I am proud. And I am a born-again primitive. His legacy, that we are not human beings. You know, it wasn't until 1898, less than a century ago, the Pope declared us to be human beings. 1898. And he's coming to Denver. Ah, I'm going to be here. <laughs> and if the Pope, and if you all don't kill Columbus, I'm going to make sure the Pope kills Columbus when he ever gets here. And if he doesn't, he's going to remember his visit. And the world will remember his visit. Like how the Maoris greeted Queen Elizabeth two years ago. The world found out. I think you guys were kept in the dark, but the rest of the world found out how the Maoris felt about the Queen of England. And Columbus, imagine the only color of the human race, the red Indians of the Western Hemisphere, were the only color of the human race not allowed to participate in the international community. That's why Columbus has to die. No one talks about majority rule in the five countries where we are majority. Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Panama, Colombia, Canada, ostensibly in Canada, because 90% of the non-Indians live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. And guess who lives in the north? And we control it. Canada found that out last year. The Oka crisis that you were kept from. When the Canadian Armed Forces employed more soldiers to surround 50 men, women, and children, Indians, than they sent to Saudi Arabia in the Gulf War. That's how serious the indigenous threat to industrial America is. And the Orwellian reality that you are now a part of. It's unacceptable that the legacy of Columbus keeps my people from sitting at the table of the international family of nations when all the rest of the sacred colors of the human race are there. Black, brown, yellow, white. We're missing. 
in 1900, they estimated there were approximately a quarter of a million Indians left in the continental United States and Alaska. 99.9% .9 of that quarter million were traditional Indian people. Now, according to the U.S. Census, who defines us by blood quantum, only two other countries in the world do that. One is past, Nazi Germany and South Africa. They say there are approximately two million Indians left in America and there are less than 400,000 on the Indian reservation. Of those 400,000, there's less than 30,000 that are traditional Indian people. So the genocide is almost complete. In 92 years, we've went from a quarter of a million to less than 30,000. It's unacceptable. That is the Columbus legacy. To celebrate the first transatlantic slave trader is beyond me. Where are the black people, my allies? I was on the Poor People's March, man. I've been there in Washington, D.C. with you all. Where are my black brothers and sisters on this question? Columbus was the first transatlantic slave trader. But it was us. Man, it was us. And this country and this city has the gall to celebrate it. And everyone knows he was a half a world off course. I mean, that's, that's buffoonery, man. You can't be more off course than a half of a world. How can you celebrate a clown like that, man? How can anybody be proud that he's a hero of questionable ancestry? Because the Portuguese, who employed him first as a slave trader up and down the West African coast, that alone, I should be marching with thousands of black brothers and sisters on Columbus Day. Where's our allies, man? Where's the Catholics? Huh? Where's the Mormons? Huh? Where's corporate America, whose land they're getting rich off of? Can't they say thank you? And say no more Columbus Day? No more Redskins? No more Braves? No more Indians riding a spotted pony around a football stadium dressed in my ancestral Heritage, Stanford, and Dartmouth, to name a few, along with University of Oklahoma, got rid of their, their names and their mascots. After I sued the Cleveland Indians baseball team for their racist, dehumanizing, derogatory symbol, Chief Wahoo, in 1971. You don't think that's an issue, Andy Rooney? And it really doesn't seem to answer the issue. The only time I have ever received hate mail was when I sued the Cleveland Indians baseball team for racism. I didn't even get hate mail from the leftists when I fought against the Sandinistas, man. But I got hate mail from the sports lovers of America, the ones that fill the stadiums, man. Now I know the four sacred colors that are primary. All colors are sacred. But in the Lakota way of life, we have four primary colors. Black, red, yellow, and white. They represent the four quarters of the universe, the four winds, the four points, the four seasons, the four ages of the world, the four ages of the human being. Those, core, those colors represent medicine, health, well-being, spirituality. You mix those four colors together, black, red, yellow, and white, and you get the color brown, the color of our grandmother, the earth. I have respect. I have respect because I know that I wasn't born in sin. 
I'm not a born liar. You understand? My children are not born liars, and neither are you. You're not born in sin. I don't care what anybody tells you or what you believe. You're a good human being with feelings. And every damn one of us have feelings, man. And that's what makes us human beings and part of the family. You know? The hawks and the eagles don't integrate, but they have respect. The hawk flies lower and stirs up the world beneath it so the eagle can see a little bit better. The black widow spider has respect for daddy long legs and they get along. The rattlesnake for the garter snake. The birch tree for the evergreen. And you go on and on throughout life and you find out that female-male balance. But you understand that we are no different than they are. And you understand that we're all born with feelings, man. The same feelings. The same pain. The same joy. So again, in the words of Chief Seattle, tribe follows tribe and nation follows nation. It's like the waves of the sea. It's the order of nature. And regret is useless. Your time of decay may be distant, but it will surely come. For even the white man's God who walked and talked with him as friend with friend could not escape our common destiny.